Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today's video is inspired by yesterday's live stream actually. It's all about taking things back to the start. What to do as a beginner fish keeper? How do you cycle a tank? How do you avoid new tank syndrome and killing your fish immediately? Someone popped into the live chat last night uh, saying they were having some problems with their fish dying because they just set up a new tank as a new fish keeper. So this video is aimed at the newbie. Um, it's all about making sure you get the best start for your new hobby. Often you'll get some, at best, dodgy advice from some of the big box stores at least. Excuse me. Hi sir, how can I help? Hi, I'd like to buy some of these fish. Do you already have a tank running? Yes. How long has it been running? Oh, it's been running in three days. That sounds absolutely perfect. Pick up your fish at the till. Buy your tank, fill it full of water, wait three days and then stick your fish in and everything will be fine. It's very rarely just fine if you do it that way. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the cycle here, the nitrogen cycle. So if you are doing any research about your new fish, you'll probably be inundated with information about people talking about cycling your filter, cycling your tank. And what they're talking about is the nitrogen cycle. Um, you don't need a chemistry degree to understand this, but you do need to understand a little bit about water chemistry because it is not difficult and it will help you immensely when you come to start the hobby. So understanding what's going on in your tank is key here. In a cycled aquarium, what we mean by a cycled aquarium is an aquarium with a filtration system um, where it's taking the waste of the fish and processing that through some bacteria which live in the filter media. The filter media is things inside your filter, whether that's sponge or rocks or any other kind of media, bacteria that live in there and take that fish waste and turn it into something less toxic. So I'll put a picture up here, which kind of explains a little bit about it, but basically you want your fish to poop and pee in the water. Some bacteria will come along and gobble that up, eat it up and produce some nitrite from that ammonia. And then some different bacteria will then later come along and gobble that up and produce some nitrate. Uh, and then you remove the nitrates from the water by doing water changes or having a very heavily planted tank or something like that. So that's that cycle, how it goes round and round like that. Ammonia produced by the fish is really, really toxic and really bad for the aquarium. Nitrite produced by that first set of bacteria is also really bad for the fish in your aquarium. Nitrate, less so. So you can build up quite a lot of nitrate before it becomes problematic. And it's generally problematic over time rather than immediately killing your fish. So that's what we want to establish in the aquarium. I would say there's kind of three main ways of doing this. Only one of them I don't really recommend. So the three main ways, uh, in my opinion, is the fish in cycle, which is what it sounds like. You use fish to do that and establish that cycle for you. The fish less cycle or some kind of boosted cycle. So the fish in cycle is uh, it's more of an old school method of you get some hardy fish chuck them in the tank straight away, turn on everything, your filter and everything, and that fish produces some ammonia. It's not enough to kill that fish because it's a hardy fish and it can survive some bad conditions. And eventually over time, your filter will do the things that it does in the fishless cycle and establish the right bacteria and start processing them better. And then you can add in the fish you actually want. I'm not a fan of this because you're essentially torturing the fish as you try and get them established and you will people lose fish all the time trying to do the fish in cycle some people swear by it say it's no problem at all they've done it for years but you'll often hear people talk about it in the same breath as I'm just going to get some cheap fish and use them to do the fishless the fish in cycle or I'm going to get some hardy fish and get them to do the fish in cycle and then get the fish that I really want I wouldn't recommend it in my opinion it takes far longer to do a fish in cycle than it does to do a fish list cycle so you are stressing for a hell of a lot longer than you would be if you just did it properly in the first place. So the fish less cycle is where you set up your tank. So you fill it full of water, add your dechlorinator or your whatever method of dechlorination you want to do. You could just let it gas off. You switch on your filter and you add a source of ammonia. Um, you then let that ammonia break down in the tank and start establishing those different types of bacteria. And it can take weeks and even months to get to a fully cycled aquarium. But the key here is you need to go out and you buy yourself a test kit and you test that aquarium religiously and you know exactly what's going on in there. Now, I will leave some links to some calculators that will help you through this. 
and there's another much more detailed video where I've essentially just ripped off by the Chill Fish Keeper. I'll leave a link down there which talks about the the cycle and the process of establishing a fishless cycle in a lot more detail in a really easy to follow and well done video. So go and check that out down below. But essentially, you're going to add a source of ammonia. You're going to keep control, keep on top of your levels and understand how much ammonia you're adding. So you're trying to top it up each day to the same amount, whether that's one, two or three parts per million uh, of ammonia in your water. Establishing your filter bacteria, which will then start to break down the ammonia and you'll see nitrite appear. And then eventually you'll see the nitrite disappear and nitrates appear. And that's, used, that's when you know you've started to get there. And once you've got everything else, if it's getting rid of two or three parts per million of ammonia every day and producing nitrates, you've hit the jackpot and you've, you've completed the cycle. So you do a big water change and you can add some fish. I will say there, don't just go out and buy hundreds and hundreds of fish and dump them in there. Still start slowly, start with a few fish so you don't overwhelm your biological load within your aquarium and you should be fine. The boosted method is what I personally use all the time because I have multiple tanks. So if you're not already, click that subscribe button. You can go and check out some of my other videos and you'll see videos about my fish room where I have a couple of dozen tanks. And at any one time, if I want to set up a new tank, I can just grab a sponge filter that's already established, move it from one tank into another instant cycle. So we're ready to go because that's already got that colony of bacteria in there which will process any fish waste. I've got a, a sump under this tank, which is full of bags, of biological media. I can go and grab them, stick them in a hang on back filter or a canister filter, and we're good to go. The other way to do that would be to add some of these kind of bacteria in a bottle products. You may have heard of um, things like sea chem stability. There, there are many, many different types and there's many, many arguments about whether or not they're actually good or not, but they exist and they are a thing. And some people swear by them which will give your filter a bit of a boost. Or you could, well, maybe not so much these days, but you could join a club or get a, a local fish group to sell your fish shop, to sell you some um, filter media, uh, established filter media, or even just a sponge and you'd give it a good old squeeze into a tank and all that gunk would come out filled with all the right, it would look really horrible, but it's filled with all the right bacterias that your filter then gets a bit of a jump start and gets ahead of the game. My preference, um, as you probably guessed, would be the fishless cycle. If you can't do the boosted cycle because you don't already have other um, tanks running, you do have to be a little bit careful with the boosted one. I mean, if you don't know the person who's giving you the cycled filter material, it could be full of all kinds of nasties. So you kind of need to take that with a pinch of salt and do it at your own risk. But if you follow all those steps, you will have a lot better chance of success and a lot better chance of reducing your stress levels as well, certainly if this is all new to you. So you'll notice none of this advice is fill your tank up, leave it for three days, throw a bunch of fish in and everything will be fine. So that's why videos like this need to exist. Like I say, there's a much better version of this with a much clearer explanation down below in the link. Check out that by the Chill Fish Keeper. But other than that, I think we've covered the basics and hopefully, hopefully, you'll be on the best road to success. I'm the manager of Aquarium Adventures and I say subscribe please. If you do have any questions, by all means, leave some comments down below. Ask me what you want to know. Join my Facebook group, Aquarium Adventures. Uh, ask any questions. There's a whole gang of people there ready to help you at any time. But other than that, if you like this kind of stuff, click the subscribe button, click the like button. It really helps out the algorithm and all that stuff. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.